Welcome back to my garage. This is the moment you've been waiting for. You're going to make chips. We've got our workpiece in the vise, our work offsets, our tools prepared, and our tool height offsets. Let's program a simple toolpath using conversational programming. Now first, let's use the end mill to machine a boss around the part, and let's make it 1.5 inches square with corner radiuses of 0 0.250 and a depth of 0.5 inches. Navigate to the Profile tab and fill out the screen exactly like you see on my screen. Once you're done, you're going to hit Post, navigate to the folder you want to save it in, and hit Save. Next, let's have the end mill machine a pocket 1 inch in diameter and 0 0.250 inches deep. For this next operation, first go to the Drill Tap tab and fill it out this way. You need to set the center of the circular pocket. Then navigate to the Pocket tab and fill it out with these numbers. When you're done, hit Append. This means you'll be adding this operation to the last file you created. And finally, we'll have it drill a 5 16th inch hole in the center of the part. Now navigate to the Drill Tap tab again. We've already determined the center of the part. Now fill out the rest of the details on this page. When that's complete, hit Append and add it to the same file. Now before you hit Cycle Start, which is the Go button, and run it wide open, there are some safety habits you should develop. This is the part of the process where crashes can occur. You think everything is set up fine, but you missed a decimal point, or inserted a negative instead of a positive number. We're humans and we make mistakes. Let's take a look at these sliders here. They're the Feed and Max Velocity sliders. When you begin your program, the machine will rapid the spindle to right above the workpiece. This rapid movement speed is controlled by the max velocity slider. Now once in position, the machine begins to feed the cutter into the part, and this speed is controlled by the feed slider. When running your program for the first time, set both of them to 0%, then press cycle start. The machine won't move. You can increase the percentage of the max velocity slider so that it moves slowly towards your part. While this is happening, keep your hand ready to press the spacebar or the feed hold button. The feed hold button is the oh snap button. If anything seems to be going wrong, press this button immediately. While your spindle is lowering toward the part slowly because your max velocity slider is set to a very small number, keep your eye on the z-axis DTG. DTG means distance to go. This is telling you how far the spindle will be moving along the z-axis from its current position in the currently programmed line. It'll wrap it down close to the part. You'll watch this number. If it says it has two inches to go and you're one inch above your part, it's going to crash the end mill directly into your part at a rapid pace. That's not good. I recommend listening to your spidey sense. Don't proceed unless you feel everything is right. If it says you have one inch to go and the end mill is slightly higher than one inch above the part, proceed. Once the cutter is in place, it'll stop moving because your feed slider is set to 0%. So that's a good safety practice as it causes everything to stop right before you're about to enter your part, and it gives you only one thing to worry about at a time. You can check and make sure it looks good. If this is your first part, then you need to walk the feed rate up just like you did the max velocity. But again, keep your hand on the feed hold or the space bar, ready to pause things if anything feels off. Do this safety check for each tool as one tool may be set up right, but the next tool may have an error in the setup. Once you've completed your part successfully, you can run the program with confidence. There's one more thing I want to show you before you run your new program. This is the toolpath preview window. It shows you the toolpaths you're about to run. You can limit it to one tool only, or you can see all the tools. You can rotate, pan, and zoom to see various angles and details. This window allows you to see if there are any random toolpaths you didn't intend to be in the code. Okay, this is it. Follow all the suggestions I just went over, set both sliders to 0%, hit cycle start, and slowly increase the max velocity slider until the spindle begins to lower. Remember, this isn't a race. Get familiar with the process before you try to go fast. I'm running this dry so that you can see what's happening, but normally I'd be running it with coolant.
it'll tell you on screen when it's time to change to the drill bit. Once the end mill and the drill tool paths have run, check the part. You should have a hole, a pocket, and a boss. Yep. <laughs> All right, last step. Grab your micrometer or your calipers and measure the boss. It should read 1.5 inches in both directions. Now measure the pocket. It should read 1.0. You can now remove your part from the vise. Congratulations, you just ran your first part on a Tormach CNC mill. Now let's quickly go over the process when using cam instead of conversational. Here I've modeled the same part in Fusion 360. Once the model is correct, switch over to the manufacturing workspace. I created a tool path using the same tools we used both for the boss and the pocket, then the drill. It looks very similar to what we did with conversational and upload to Pathpilot. Next, I'll go to the file tab and select Pathpilot Hub and hit refresh. Find the file I just uploaded, then copy it to the machine and load it. And there it is. Now this code that we generated from Fusion 360 is ready to be run using the same process of running a part that we used in Conversational. Hopefully now you have a lot more confidence to run your machine. Be sure to check out Tormach's YouTube channel, as well as Titans of CNC and NYC CNC to learn additional information about running your mill, CAD, CAM, and more. To quote the great Obi-Wan Kenobi, you've taken your first step into a larger world. Thanks for joining me in my garage.